Hello everybody. In this episode, the 49th episode of Coffee with Jody, I'm going to be taking you through the 11 steps to overcome the fear effect. So I'm not a gamer, but I heard of this game called the fear effect and I was like, hmm, what's that? Well, the fear effect is a game where the players have something that looks like a EKG. It's called a life, uh, a life uh, bar. And it's a meter that measures the amount of stress that they have. In that game, if you become anxious or you get injured, then the bar goes faster, runs faster, and it can eventually get to where it's red, almost like an EKG when you go into, uh, into a flat line. Now in the game, a player can regain health by doing actions that calm the player's heart. And that's what I'm talking with you about today. The 11 things that you can do to overcome the fear effect that you may be feeling, like so many others of us, myself included, in this extended version of the COVID pandemic. Most of us thought, okay, three months, I can do that. I mean, even if you know, we run out of money, we can certainly make it through like the next three months. However, there's no real end in sight as of yet. We're trying to take steps towards some sort of normal. Um, but there's still a lot of fear, a lot of fear in, you know, in just people with their families, and their health, their well-being, their children, their elderly loved ones. And also a lot of fear in many of the businesses that have been so deeply impacted. We know some businesses are doing fine and even thriving because their industry lends itself to that. But there are many others where fear is, is tough. It can be consuming. So today, 11 things that you can do right now to overcome the fear effect. So the first one. The first one is to communicate. Communicate with your team. We're doing a daily lean meeting or huddle half an hour every morning. We go over a number of the things that we're focusing on, such as the taps, improvements. We're studying lean principles and how it can relate to our company. We go through gratefuls. We go through a word of the week. We go through quotes and we're doing learning in our firm right now on how can we deepen our understanding of working to our strengths. So communicating with the team, we recommend daily, whether it's 10 minutes or 45 minutes, that you're having a daily meeting with your team. The next is to communicate with your clients. The clients that you interact with on an ongoing basis like we do, they know we're still here because we're talking all the time. However, if you have a product um, that you don't sell over and over and over every day or every week, then you'll need to let your customers and your clients know, hey, we're still here, we're still operating, we're open, um, here's what uh, you need to do to interact with us, to reach us, um, let everyone know we're still here. And then your suppliers, because the suppliers need to know that you're still in business so they can begin to do their own planning around what your needs are going to be. So you want to let them know we need more, we need less. From there, you'll use the avenues to get your message out. So obviously you can use email, you can use social media, you can use PR, you can use videos, you can do webinars. There's a number of different ways that you can let people know, hey, we're open, this is what's going on, these are our new products and services, this is our price changes, whatever it is that you need to communicate. But you cannot, I repeat, you cannot communicate too much. The next one is to be positive. And you know, those of us that own businesses or business leaders of any level, staying positive that can be a challenge from time to time. Let, let there be no mistake. Everybody has their moments, me too. However, when we're interacting with others, being positive, and that might look like, what are we grateful for? What can we celebrate, like the wins, even if they're small wins? And how can we find ways to improve the business looking for the opportunity 
the, the uh, ability to do better, so to be positive. We can do better. We can actually implement Kaizen here, constant and never ending improvement. And then take responsibility for what you're saying. You know, I recognized something the other day, um, Doug and I were talking and we heard this, this comment of uh, it's simple, it's easy and it's fun to replace anything that you're being challenged by. And he was actually fixing a fan in our front porch and you know, oh my God, this is like, this is really challenging and I don't know if I'm gonna you know, do this the right way. And I was like, no honey, it's simple, it's easy, it's fun. <laughs> and it was like, oh, good grief. But I kept saying it and then within five minutes we had the fan fix. So it really does matter what you're saying. And sometimes we can be talking and we don't even realize that we've said something that was negative or fearful. So just really watch and modify take responsibility for what it is that you're saying, right? The third thing is recognizing the economic cycles. I want to take a little bit of time here because there's economic cycles or seasons, if you will, winter, spring, summer, and fall. Clearly we're in winter right now. Um, this is everything you would associate with being in winter. Um, it's cold, it's harsh. Uh, there's not a lot of movement. Uh, you know, this really, um, all of the harshness of winter. And the next cycle would move to spring. So I was reading a paper on the economic cycles and it was saying that the typical winter cycle is about 11 months. They did a study from 1947 to two, through 2019. The typical length of time for a winter was about 11 months. The recession that we had back in 2007, 2000, uh, up to 2009 was December 2007 through June of 2009 was 18 months. But on average, it's like a year, give or take. So we'll be in spring in a year. Will we be in spring in a year from April or from the middle of the summer right now? Not entirely clear, but think of it as about a year. And the studies also said that the typical expansion period lasted about 65 months. And the last one from 2009 to 2020 was 128 months. So we had a long expansion period. And so as you think about winter, you're, you're mending the nets, you're getting ready for spring, you're getting ready for activity, you're getting ready for growth, and all of the things that are associated with that. We found for us that we took on Paul Aker's two second lane. So you may have heard me talking about this a lot lately because over the past four months, five months now, we've been learning something about the concept of two second lean. Just fix what bugs you and eliminate waste. And we have become raving fans. So the server's been cleaned out, the office space has been cleaned out, the files have been cleaned out, the way we do things, everything is being examined and tweaked little bit, little bit, little bit, that's having a compound effect. Right? So this is the period of time where you're really getting ready for the growth that happens in spring. Summer is an economic boom. So that period of time just ahead for us in 2021. And then when you start to see some of the rumblings of fall where, you know, maybe things are slowing down a little bit, that's where you go and you start to prune the trees, you begin to cut back, you're conserving cash that you've uh, been able to accumulate over spring and summer and those economic cycles. And I will tell you quite frankly, when we were in the last recession that ended in 2009, We'd only been in business for a few short years and you know, like I didn't even know what lessons necessarily to take from that. Um, what I know now is I would have a much greater cash reserve and um, very, very grateful for the PPP and the EIDL that allowed us to, you know, to make smart decisions about how we would move forward and keep our team. Right? So we are in economic winter. 
So you do the things that people do in the winter time, right? The next is change. You know, this will require long hours of thinking, a shift to a leaner, faster, uh, better business model. Uh, as I was just saying, the two second lean in, in Paul Akers, if you go to paulakers.net, you know, there's a plethora of resources there. Videos, free books, audio books, all kinds of resources. And in his books, when you go to the chapter in the book, it has other resources from other companies and other people, including the Toyota Way book, you know, where they're exploring you know, just fixing, fixing what bugs you. Little tiny things that compound over time. Uh, we're absolute 110% raving fans. Yesterday I was talking with a client and we were examining their business model and looking at, okay, and what else can we add here? And what else can we do here? And they came up with a number of different ideas that would be very easy to implement and have a huge impact, not only on their business community, their client base, but also on their bottom line. It takes, thinking though, you have to set aside the time to think either alone or with an advisor or mentor or your coach, right? Next, cut back. You have to survive. If you can cut back even more, cut back, but you've got to survive and get through to the other side. If you don't make it through, then, you know, it's all about having to start over. If you can, cut back whatever you can to be able to stay in the game. But don't be afraid to cut back, whether it's hours or prices, you just, whatever you need to do, cut back. Next, credit. If you took the actions early on in the pandemic, you may have been able to take advantage of increasing the line of credit, um, you know, we know some of the large corporations pulled down their entire lines of credit just so they'd have cash on hand. Uh, they've also have enormous um, opportunity in refinancing. This is the lowest interest rate since I've been alive and probably before that. <laughs> They're really, really low, so under 2%. If you can refinance, refinance. Um, if you can increase your credit line, if you've got really good credit scores and you're you're uh, paying your uh, bills on time, you may be able to extend credit, um, extend payment terms a little bit, uh, whatever way you can, um, you know, try to keep conserving cash, increase your cash as much as you can. All right, smart staffing. Um, for our company, we were able to bring uh, our team back, I don't know, maybe like after a month or five weeks, something like that. Uh, where we had cut back to four days a week, or then we, we actually did less hours, but every day because we kind of needed them every day. Um, we were able, as soon as we got PPV money, to bring them back on full time, and it's our intention to keep them on full time. And what we've done is we've just taken on every kind of project that we would want to do to improve our business and have the time to do it and the training for them to be able to do it. And then uh, with Louisa, our marketing coordinator, we're doing a lot more videos, a lot more uh, content is getting out there because marketing is super important and everyone wants to cut back on marketing when really what you might want to do is consider, make sure you get a return on investment, but up the marketing. Remote working. Um, you know, I was just in a conversation maybe an hour or so ago about how people are still really afraid of remote working. We've had a results only work environment here for years. So we're comfortable with that. We like being together, um, but all there is to do is to make sure that you have clear parameters around what it is that the deliverables are, when they're due, and a great reporting system. But remote working, it may be that people aren't really looking to keep their offices. Um, we don't really know what that's gonna look like uh, as the next years unfold in terms of people paying really high exorbitant rents uh, to have their offices you know, in the heart of the city. And do we really need that? You know, I don't know. But what I do know is remote working, we all found a way to make it work. And some of us have had remote workers for a long time. My uh, Maria has been, she doesn't live here. She lives in North Carolina. She's been working remotely with me for years. Right, so 
create a results only work environment where you trust people and for the most part they'll step up the ones who don't it'll be self-evident pretty quickly next look at other ways that you can deliver your products or your services when we've become very dependent on uh, you um, UPS FedEx our postal service we don't really know what in the world's going to happen with that right now but um, you know we're still using them we sent a package out today and we are delivering all of our coaching over zoom so how can you deliver your product or your service and make it easier for people you know do you really need to speak as often is there another way that you can communicate um, do you want to send things over have them reviewed and sent back I mean there's just looking at how can you deliver it and yet deliver an extraordinary customer experience my sister told me that she booked a hotel and um, within 20 minutes the hotel called back and said we'd like to let you know here's some things that you might want to um, add to your stay here we want you to know these are restaurants that we have uh, contracted with that they can uh, deliver to your room and these are some restaurants that are open here's what you can do when you're here in our community she was just like blown away you know talk about a great customer experience I wish I knew the name of the hotel I would tell you right now which would be great word-of-mouth marketing I'll probably ask her and make sure I put it in all right uh, the next one is sales and marketing marketing and sales um, you want to have the marketing be so targeted so clear so educational that the sales process is greatly shortened because people already know I want that that's a fit for me why wouldn't I do that that makes sense so the only question you have to ask is how does this fit with what you had in mind and then you're gonna know right away they're ready to purchase or whatever objection or concern it is that you need to handle but the marketing is absolutely positively critical right now up your marketing and with the ease of being able to do things on video and putting them up on YouTube and putting them on social media I mean it's a lot easier than it used to be um, all you got to do is think about what do you want to say and if you were a customer what would you want to hear the last one number 11 is rinse and repeat you go back to the beginning you start all over again if you're doing this every day awesome if you're doing it every week okay but communicate be positive understand the economic cycles and the cycle that we're in and you need excuse me what you need to do to prepare for spring be willing to change be willing to pivot be willing to modify your business model cut back where you can get credit increase cash wherever you can use smart staffing be open to remote work and making it work for people you know particularly those mothers and fathers whose kids are staying home um, being schooled at home how else can you deliver your product or service somebody was telling me she's teaching yoga in the backyard <laughs> that's really cool and then up your marketing and let people know what it is that you have to offer that will make a difference for them in their world rinse and repeat that's it for today those are the ways that you can bring your heart rate down that you can calm yourself because when you're in action and you're doing these things knowing where you stand you can regain your health and overcome fear the fear effect it can get shattered bye for now so if you got value from this overcoming the fear effect then please like it share it subscribe and we'll see you again very soon